Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of what we're calling uh, Crowdfunding Showcase. And it's also going to be the first episode of Solo Sagas because this crowdfunder that we are currently uh, going to show off, Dragon Dancer, Dowser, is a solo TTRPG. So I'm super excited. I've never done one of these online or uh, on the show before, so please bear with me. Um, real quick, let me share the link to the Kickstarter. It's there in the chat. Uh, head over and follow along. I highly recommend signing up. Go ahead and uh, pre-order your copy of the game. It comes with uh, a fabulous looking book, a set of playing cards that you will use as your map. Um, this, this game is built off of the Carta system, um, which is by P Peach, Peach Garden Games, um, where you use uh, a deck of cards and you lay them out and you, as you travel over them, you flip them over. Uh, I've looked at Carta before and kind of want to build something off of it. And so getting the chance to play this on the stream or at all is super exciting. Plus the fact that the whole game is about rescuing dragon eggs from uh, mean people. So... I am all about that. So why don't we dive in? I'm going to show you the setup. Um, I realized when you have to set out uh, essentially, what is it, 30, no, 24 cards? 24 cards. Um, that actually uses up a bunch of space. So hopefully you'll be able to see as much of this as possible. But we're going to start. I've already moved things. There we go. So here's, here's what you need for the game. You need your deck of cards, which the Kickstarter will uh, provide for you, or you can use a regular set as well. Um, for this, I did pick up this Mythical Creatures uh, set. Actually, I got, oh, where did, what did I do with the other set? There they are. I got set one and set two because they are so wonderful. Uh, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. Uh, you need your deck of cards. Uh, I have the aces pulled out already. I'll explain that in a moment. A six-sided die. And technically I can use the six-sided die as my location marker, but I'm gonna use my little uh, Krenez figure from Hero Forge. And then you need some tokens to manage your resources with. And I have some coins in this here dragon box that I thought was perfectly suitable. So we're gonna set that off to the side here. And why don't we, well, first I'm going to do a quick uh, lore exposition moment um, as we head into the world that uh, Dragon Dowser exists in. Um, I know it has a name and I meant to write it down and I completely forgot. So if you're watching and you know the name, please put it in chat. <laughs> but uh here thank you pralar perfect thank you so much um so this is from the preview book that i got uh i'm not i'm not saying this is going to be the final uh text that is in the book but uh, i'm i have a feeling it's going to be pretty darn close uh our world was on the brink of collapse when the dragons arrived from a place parallel to our own they came to us, their unhatched eggs producing a wondrous energy, able to power long-buried machines we once relied upon. Eventually, the land began to heal, and the spore storms calmed. By the way, spore storms? Awesome. Uh, but then we discovered the yoke of their eggs held the true power. Using the revived machines as weapons, our tyrannical rulers slaughtered countless dragons to take their precious eggs, undoing centuries of peace in the blink of an eye. Like I said, mean people. Now, a group of rebels called Dowsers work to save the remaining dragon eggs and restore peace to Praelar. So using your dowsing crystal, you must overcome the elements, uncover ancient mysteries, avoid the attentions of those tyrannical rulers, and save the last of the dragon eggs. So to do that, we are going to set up those cards. And I've got my book over here just so that I can remember how to do all of this. All right, so we've got our setup. We're going to take our 54 playing cards and we are going to take out the aces, which I've already done. 
Uh, we're going to take out the Jokers, which I'm pretty sure I've already done. There they are. We've got our Aces and our Jokers. After I read the four dowsings, I'm going to select the Ace that I wish to find. So these represent the Dragon Eggs themselves. Um, Rather than selecting for this game, I'm going to randomly draw one. So I'm going to mix them up here. And we're going to take this one, which is going to be the Ace of Diamonds. All right. I'm going to place it to the side. I'm going to shuffle the remaining deck. and deal 23 cards. So, need to put those back in there. And then I'm gonna shuffle these. Hopefully the card shuffling is not too loud. Please let me know if it is. And the other thing that I forgot to mention is this is a journaling game, so I do have a journal set up um, in Word for this. I might handwrite it if I were doing this, uh, not on stream, but just so you can see what I'm doing. I've got it set up in Word. So we will start off with that as I reveal what. Well, thank you, Stacy. <laughs> I, uh, I've always been fairly decent at doing this part. It's doing the bridge, like trying to get them back together. I would just end up shooting, shooting cards everywhere. All right, so I need 23 cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. All right, then I'm going to take the rest of the cards and I'm going to put them back in the box or on top of the box. And these cards are brand new, so they're super slippery. So I did notice they might jump around a bit while we're playing, but so it goes. So then we take that ace, actually. While I have the ace out, we have the ace of diamonds. And I'm going to head over to my journal because we're going to talk about that ace there. As soon as I find my page. So the Ace of Diamonds. So diamonds are teeth. Uh, that's the, the correlation between uh, spades or scales, clubs or talons, and hearts. Well, hearts are hearts. So this one uh, each each of your starting aces essentially explains where or what happened to this egg. And it says, with its sister's last breath, she crawled to the back of her or of the lair and set off the traps, collapsing the tunnel above the Me Mechark soldiers. A few managed to escape being crushed, but the landslide would take months to clear. The captain knew there must be another way to the egg, but where was the entrance? they didn't find it soon they'd be replaced by a soldier that wasn't wet behind the ears or sorry that is still wet behind the ears even worse so essentially we are looking for the earth autumn and mysteries dragon so in this here journal as soon as i find it on my screen there we go so i've added a little flavor uh it rained last night, but this morning the sun rose to a clear sky. The world feels refreshed, as do I, as I ready my gear and myself to head out once again. And I'm looking for the, uh, the Earth Dragon Egg, or the Autumn Dragon Egg. Uh, we'll say Autumn. I like that. I search. Oh, and it's not in the right font. That's all right. I search for the Egg of the Autumn Dragon. Creature of Mysteries. Uh, let's see. Um, rumor has it that Mechark soldiers were last seen chasing it 
or uh, its sister, let's say that. Um, Mechark soldiers were last seen chasing its sister near the mountains. I can only hope they did not catch her. All right, so with that, we're gonna go and lay out our cards. So I'm gonna take the diamond or the ace and put it back in. I'm not gonna look at any of these as I reshuffle so I don't know where that ace went. And now if you saw the other aces might be in here, they may not. Um, they get reshuffled back into the deck and they act as blessings. Um, essentially they are eggs that you find along the way that unfortunately were broken. However, they do uh, give you a boon. I believe it is six extra resources. Okay, now here should be the interesting part. Let's see if I can do this and fit them all in. And sorry about the glare on the top. That is my silly light. I need to find something to block it with that also doesn't block it from going elsewhere. So essentially we're building our map here. This is where the dowser will travel in order to find the egg in question. Now it might be the very first card I pull. It might be the very last card that's available. Uh, we're going to take the jokers both of them and we're gonna put them on opposite sides of the map um, it's recommended to do so with a good bit of distance in between them and it's at the very edge sorry there but we'll put them this is essentially the layout that is in the book and one of those is the start so I'm gonna place Krenez over here on the start and we're gonna start with I believe the book says eight resources now, uh, there are revised rules that say 10, but I'm gonna try this with eight. I'm gonna see how this goes. So I'm gonna pull eight of these coins out. These are dog coins from um, Animal Adventures, I think, which is super cute. There's four, six, and eight. Now it costs resources to move across the map, but you can find resources along the way. All right, so I have my eight, which are off camera, I apologize. Okay, so movement with each turn, I'm gonna move my dowser to an adjacent card in any direction because uh, you can move diagonally. I can technically move to one of these. However, I'm going to, we're just gonna step off this way. Now, when you land on a face down card, you're gonna flip it over and you're going to follow the prompts that correspond with the, the uh, number and the suit that are in the rule book. So we have 10 of diamonds there. Diamonds again are teeth. So Krenez, our dowser, just landed on the 10 of diamonds and now I'm gonna scroll to Diamonds, 10. All right, it's a positive effect. Um, while searching an abandoned lair, I found an ancient human artifact which will fetch significant price with the traders. Awesome. Uh, and then there's writing prompts. So describe the artifact. What do I trade it for? So I get plus two to my resources. That is a fantastic way to start off. Definitely not complaining there. Plop. And let's see. So we're gonna go over to the prompt and we're going to see what my brain comes up with. Uh, okay, so I headed out in search for the egg. Um, 
Ten of Diamonds. Uh, the card, anything would say, uh, and the cards themselves will come with text on them, and they'll say these different uh, different things depending on what you pull. So this one says, anything old world is usually worth its weight in machine parts. So, uh, let's do stumbling upon a small cave. <clears throat> I hazarded a look inside. You never know what's inside caves. Unsure of what may reside within. Um, and if my clicking keyboard is too loud, I apologize. Just let me know and I can try and type quieter. But let's see here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. While there were signs of a wildcat, nothing seemed recent. I almost uh, <clears throat> departed without investigation or without investigating further when I noticed something shiny. Let's see, half buried by rock and dirt was the, or were the remains of an unfortunate traveler. Seeing as they weren't, uh, seeing as they aren't able to use their goods, alleviated <laughs> them revealing uh, what appears to be an ancient artifact uh, let's see what does this thing look like um, I feel like it for whatever reason, the, the, the Ghostbusters uh, scanner is coming to mind. So even though it may not look like that, uh, maybe it is some kind of dousing rod. Um, it reminds me greatly of a strange dousing rod. Though it does not appear to currently function. I will see what I can fetch for it at the market. All right, and I'm just gonna make a note here, effect plus two. Uh, I got two resources there. All right, so that is the end of day one. And as we uh, close that out, then the next thing that I would do um, is in the entry, I would head to entry two, uh, throw in a little flavor text, and then we would go back to our map. So on our map, we have Krenez standing here at the first card from the sanctuary. And let's be weird and go diagonally. I don't know if that's weird, but we're going to go this way. Two of hearts. No egg yet. So entry two. Two of hearts. Oh, I actually need to... Uh, in my document here, I am going to put down... Oops, ten of diamonds. Um, I am going to put down what cards I got, just so that I can keep track. Next one is two of hearts. And then I'll go back over to the book and find out what hearts are. Clubs, hearts, two. It is a negative, ooh, wow. That is a hardcore negative one, too. So two of hearts is a negative card. Uh, <laughs> they interrupted the only bad bath I've had in a fortnight. Apparently I didn't bathe before 
going on this quest, I thought I would find uh, my favorite spring in which to bathe in. Um, it says, a community I came across believe I am a Mechark spy. They chased me out. Torches burning at my heels. Uh, the prompts are, why do they believe I am a spy and how did I escape? So the effect, this one is a little painful. Uh, the effect is a minus five to my resources. And uh, let's see. The two of hearts. Um, why did they believe I was a spy? Okay. Um, let's see. Heading. Heading for my favorite bathhouse in the town of this is always the worst part coming up with names um shambleton i was seen uh futzing i'll go with futzing with the artifact i discovered in the cave we won't tell them about how i discovered it um A, a, we'll say a drunkard, <laughs> a, a confused drunkard took me for a Mechard, no, Mechark spy. And the word spread like wildfire until they were chasing me from town with real fire and pitchforks so unfortunately minus five so let's see i had i gained two so here's my 10 i gained two and now i'm losing five so now I am down to five. Whew. And that ends day two. Not the best. But I suppose it could be worse. Um, I actually haven't looked to see what the worst effects are and what the best effects are. It's This is all a surprise as I'm going. Um, so we are going to head into day three. As we move Krenez, the dowser, uh, let's go diagonal again. Let's go down here. And I'm going to try and flip this card. Six of hearts. Another negative. Ouch. Okay, so the description is, you come to the aid of a mechark soldier being trampled in the mud by a group of fellow dowsers. Um... However, whatever their crimes are, it's just not cool to be doing that. It's not a fair fight. There's several of them, only one of the, the Mechark guys. Maybe this guy could be a nice fellow and is could be on our side. You never know. Um, so how do I defuse the situation and what are the consequences of my action? So I feel like Krenez, um, Krenez has always been my, so he's my bard and he's always kind of upfront with people but also is a smooth talker so uh let's see let's add six of hearts to the journal we have a negative effect of only minus one which is good i mean it's not great but it's better than the minus five and what do we do here? Uh, Krenez is, is a smooth talker. He's going to, um, he's going to pull out his loot. Pulling out my loot. I stepped into the fray. A uh, melodic tone uh, distracting. my fellow dowsers. Maintaining my position between them. I 
managed to, uh, we'll say, allay their anger long enough for the uh, Mechark soldier. flee. I do hope he will, uh, let's say he will be safe and that his loyalties are called into uh, doubt. Are uh, his loyalties um, Trying to think of a better way to say that. Uh, yeah, essentially his uh, his loyalties are are um, sorry, my brain is turning off. I can't think of the words. Are called into doubt is what we'll say. Uh, ideally, that means you know in the future this fellow would be nice enough to help others of the. Douser variety. All right, so going back to our tokens, we only have five left, and when you run out of when you run out of tokens, that means that the game is over, and you give up on your search for the current egg that you're going after. So we're going to take one out. We're going down to four. And we're going to hope for the best. Why don't we... Hmm... Let's go... <laughs> Stacy, that's a great one. His loyalties are now questioned. Uh, by him, not by necessarily other people, though. So we're going to go diagonal again. Maybe I should stop going diagonally, but we'll find out. Let's flip this one to get the Eight of Clubs. Or the machine. All right, so the eight. The eight of clubs is a positive. Uh, it's a positive chaos card. Interesting. So I need to double check to see what chaos does. Um, but the description is I retrieve something functional or I retrieve some functional parts from an otherwise broken machine. Awesome. Uh, the card says nothing gets wasted out here. And the prompt is what was the machine's original purpose? Good question. What do I create with the parts? Um, all right, so I am going to just double check and see what chaos does because I know it is a thing. Mm -mm -mm. Do, 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 do. I should have bookmarked it. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, bear with me as I find about chaos. The upside is I'm going to gain resources, which I really appreciate. I feel like I rolled a d6 for something on here. Or maybe that is what, because the... Uh, I believe could be wrong and if you're watching this and you know better let me know so I believe I am going to roll my d6 and I gain that much in resources because the effect says plus d6 and I'm pretty sure that's what I read earlier but just in case let me know if I'm wrong I'm gonna roll five awesome I will take that absolutely as it regains the five that I lost from those villagers chasing me out with their pitchforks and torches. All right. Okay, awesome. Uh, so yeah, the... Uh... Oh, Carta has a negative chaos. Good to know. 
Uh, so there are five new ones to go with my four remaining. So now we're back to nine, which is not too shabby. I'm good with that. All right, so the we'll go back over to the journal. Entry four is an eight of clubs, which its effect was plus d6. And I'm just going to make a note that I got five. <clears throat> All right, so the prompt is what do I find that's working? And what was the purpose of the workshop? Okay, so I feel like uh, there is a, uh, a small building that's been overcome with uh, growth. There's vines dripping off of it. Uh, there's even moss that almost hides the wood behind the growth. Um, I just happened to notice that there was a darker spot where there were uh, shadows that go back into the the workshop. And so investigating, uh, going through this kind of um, dripping vines of uh, kind of like kudzu and such uh, and, and pushing some of the moss off of what ended up being a door, I pushed through and I realized that this used to be some kind of uh, machine workshop. Um, inside there are parts of, of robots, uh, these war machines that used to, um, that were used to fight the dragons, but also it looked like there were um, some kind of uh, uh, scooter or something, something that um, was, was used for uh, a single person to get around maybe faster. And on there there were some gears and uh, like a motor that can be energized to run um, that kind of thing that still works worth a lot of money to those who are in the know so over on uh, the, the journal here um, I'm gonna cut down the length of what I'm writing from what I just said but within the workshop I found what appeared to be a uh, functional self-transportation device. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know if, if I know what motors are. Krenez certainly does not know what motors are uh, in his own world, but here, um, the gadget that seems to make the wheels turn is in good repair. I just realized I'm totally off screen for you. There we go. And that I've hoped twice up here. Uh, let's see, the gadget seems to make the wheels turn, is in good repair, and should catch, fetch, should fetch a uh, good price at the market. And I'll go back later and, and fancy this up with uh, what I was talking about earlier. I probably should have been typing while I was saying it. And that is end, the end of day four. So then we head into day five. As Krenez here is going to go, we're going to head back one. We're going to go this way. And you can go in any direction, depend, uh, and as long as the card that you're going on to is touching the other card or connected to. Three of clubs. Whew. You know, just when uh, fate hands me something, it has to take it away. So the three of clubs is a negative card. So we got three of clubs. The description says, you repair a farming machine, but mechark soldiers reprogram it to slay a family of nearby dragons. How terrible is that? Krenez would be heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. Um, the card says, from tilling soil to spilling blood, they never stood a chance. 
That's so sad. The prompt says, describe how the betrayal feels. How do you eventually view, deal with the machine? Okay, so uh, as I'm going along, I, I actually realize that I have this, uh, this part and or I, I, you know, I know that I have these parts in my possession, and as I'm as I'm traveling through, I'm in a uh, a fairly wide expanse of farmland um, that's just now being uh, tilled and and uh, seeded, and I can see a family up ahead that is trying to fix the machine that uh, has some smoke coming out of it. It's rusty parts or uh, like the exterior of it has been taken off and um, the, the oldest son is uh, elbow deep in, in its interior parts trying to figure out what has gone wrong. And I, I amble up for some good conversation and to kind of get an idea of what's going on. And the, uh, the, the father explains it to me um, that the uh, they were just getting re ready to till and whether it's something that's broken down or that they should have been maintenancing, whatever. And so I take a look in there and I recognize uh, some of the parts as uh, what I've been carrying since the last place. And so I offer up uh, those in order to fix this machine for these obviously kind people. Um, why would I not just trust them, right? And so... I spend some time most of the day uh, helping the oldest son to do this and uh, as I finish up I do notice a mechark soldier heading this direction um, without appearing to be uh, worried about it I will amble around the other side of the machine so that it is between myself and the uh, the soldier just because you never know if they're coming coming to find dowsers uh but what it ended up being was the middle son is a mech arc soldier and i listened to the family talk for a bit and how the machine has been um fixed and how there are parts that are within it that weren't working before that are now working like even previous to when when they were using the machine as a uh, essentially a tiller like a, an earth mover um and the the mech arc soldier the middle son realizes that these parts that have been installed in it uh reactivated some weaponry <laughs> on what otherwise was a some kind of war machine um and he and his fellows end up uh, taking it off, like take, taking the machine. And first of all, they, they take it from his family who needed it to do their, like till their fields and, and seed their crops. And they went off and slaughtered a bunch of dragons. That hurts. And I lose four. resources i feel like i should lose all my resources for that one that was horrible <laughs> okay so we've gone from nine back down to five double check yep five left all right krenez let's have a better day tomorrow as you settle in to the cold forest nearby um that was sad <laughs> All right, entry six. As we head out on the next day, I'm starting to second guess myself. If you are watching and you have a direction you want me to go, I am free or I am open to uh, suggestions. Whew. Uh, I've got three, four areas I can move to. Five. Any of these are accessible from this spot here. Maybe I will roll a die for it. So this will be one through five. I'm going to roll a d6. One. We're going back up here. And you 
I believe you can move across ones that you have already been on before, but it does, uh, I think it still uses your resources to do so. Uh, so we definitely don't want to use any more resources than we need to. Um, so let's flip this card. We got a king, a king of hearts. And I love these, uh, this card deck that I got. Uh, got the dragon on there. Okay. So entry six is going to be the king of hearts. check our book here it's a positive one huzzah description says you land in a ravaged local settlement on the back of a black sorry on the back of a male spring dragon together you defend them while they rebuild awesome so along the way uh another dowser that i know I run into them and they have this this spring dragon with them as they're um, traveling along and I explain to them what happened recently uh, at that that settlement that I just passed with the all the farmers and everything and I say you know what I would really like to do is get their stuff back get that machine back for them um, and make sure that the Mechark soldiers can't take it back from them. So uh, the dragon agrees, and we take off and fly over this forest that I've been walking through. We go out over the fields that should be being planted, but now I can see in the distance there are just uh, um, people with, you know, like hoes and rakes trying to work this massive land because the machine was taken. Um, and I scout around with the dragon until I can see it uh, landing I f at the machine, um, or rather, uh, as we swoop over it, the dragon picks up the machine, we fly it back and drop it down, and we wait there for the Mechark soldiers to return. Uh, the soldiers return, the dragon and I uh, fight them off and warn them to never return. Um, and in doing so, we get five resources back. Whew. All over the place. Losing, gaining. There's my, my five to go back with my four. And I'm back up to nine. <laughs> All right. So with my nine... Let's go. Um, I'm actually going to go back up. Let's go this way. Krenaz heads this direction. And we've got another face card. We've got the Queen of Diamonds. I'm not 100% sure what that creature is on this card. Let's see. That is Amit, the devourer of the dead in Egyptian mythology. Uh, which has nothing to do with this game. I just really like this <laughs> uh, set of cards. Um, I did forget to put my effect on my journal, so I'm just going to do that real quick. Plus five. And entry seven. We get the Queen of Diamonds. All right, so heading up to the diamond section. Queen of Diamonds, it's a positive card, excellent. Says very few dowsers are entrusted with such a great gift. A description says a mother autumn dragon gives you a dowsing crystal connected to their family. That is fantastic. Prompt says, describe the crystal. What does it feel like when you wear it? Uh, so I already have a dowsing crystal that um, I essentially it's what I'm using to go around but this one uh, is it's kind of a greenish color and it seems like it has it looks like it has vines that run through but it's actually just very fine cracks that other minerals have settled into and it looks like it has this growth within um, as I set it around my neck with the 
dowsing crystal that I already have, which is a blue one. It's actually a very dark blue um, that when it catches the light, uh, looks like it it flashes a little bit, uh, almost supernaturally. Um, what does it feel like? It feels uh, maybe a little heavier than mine, almost like the weight of uh, the earth is is within it, um, whereas the other one is more like wearing a storm and it's maybe a little, uh, maybe it feels a little tingly. So the effect of this card is granting me a plus four. So now we're above 10. I think it's the first time since I started. All right, I might have to dive into, I do need to dive into my other coins here because I only have 10 of the uh, the doggo coins. So there's four more to go with my doggo coins. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So as we are looking down at our map here, um, Krenna's essentially can go two places to uncover new cards. I think I'm going to go directly across. I think I'm going to go over here just to leave a lot of that open. Um, again, never having played this before, I'm not sure if there's a better strategy than others. And we revealed the three of spades for entry eight. Three of spades. All right. Using our rule book, we will head to the spades section. Oh no. I'm losing those four that I just got. Actually, I'm about to sneeze. Hang on one sec. Just kidding. Every time I think I'm going to and I say it, it stops. So the three of spades is a negative card. Um, you enter a dragon's lair, but discover it's abandoned and it's late uh, and the, it, there's mech art traps within. Uh, the card says usually their traps are crude and amateurish, but not today, apparently. The prompt is, how do you negotiate the traps? What do you lose attempting to escape? Um, seeing as I just gained four, it makes sense that not expecting these traps, I'm wearing my, my dousing crystals, and I hear the click of it as I step on the, the, uh, the spring for the trap. And just as that happens, I jump back and the... Um, the motion of it causes the dousing crystals to kind of like fly up. They're on a chain, but they fly up a little bit. And there's like a snapping, kind of like a, a very large bear trap. And the dousing crystal gets smashed in between and shatters. My crystal is still fine. Um, but the, the one that the spring dragon gave to me is now broken. And I lose four. Those, those four that I just got putting them back in the pool. All right, and on my journal, I put my effect down, minus four. After setting off all of those traps, I am going to sleep in here for this evening. Uh, probably not a unsafe place, although maybe the mech arcs will come back. You never know. And in the morning, we will head out for day nine, which, let's see, I think I'm going to go diagonally, I think I'm going this way, but let's start with this first card, I'm going to draw, or flip it here, for the five of spades. I'm gonna hope for the best. Let's see. No, it's another negative. Uh, the five of spades. The description says, whilst traveling a river, you lose your footing and slip. You are submerged in the dark water and quickly develop a fever. 
The card says, Mother Nature has a lot to answer for. <laughs> and the prompt is, where do you shelter to get warm? What remedies or techniques do you use to recover? Um, likely I would not go back to the cave where the the mech arc traps were as even though I know it's there uh, I, I kind of pushed my luck last night staying there so I will continue on shivering uh, burning with fever but shaking and trying to uh, find a place to to uh, safely bed down for the rest of the day even though I haven't been traveling very long um, I do notice that there is a, uh, it, it appears like there was, um, there's some ruins, like a, um, a, an old wooden house that has mostly fallen apart. It's almost indistinguishable from the forest around me, uh, but the uh, moss has overgrown the, the roof, and so it provides shelter from any kind of like rain and such. And as I pull out my, my blanket and I push myself back as far as I can in there and cover up with it, I kind of scoop some of the, the dead detri uh, detritus uh, leaves and stuff that are on the ground um, to hide myself a little better. Uh, I will lose a day and it costs me two resources. So now we're from 10 back down to eight as I take off two. But in the morning, uh, I wake and the rest has done me uh, a fair amount of good. Um, I'm probably still shaking off that kind of bleh feeling, but it does uh, move to entry 10 then. All right. I feel like I've been making very poor choices in the last couple of moves. Um, Let's let's go back up then. We're gonna go up here to this one. And we have a queen of hearts. And that is a, a Karin, I believe, on the card. Um, so entry 10, queen of hearts. All right. Good. we found another positive thing the description says you prevent a female spring dragon who is set on retribution from destroying a settlement awesome um the card says there are casualties on both sides i hope she's not beyond reason and the prompt says how do you talk the dragon down what do the people offer you as thanks um all right so as i'm moving through this forest i notice that there are uh, signs of, of a settlement nearby. There's tracks on the ground. Uh, there are um, signs that there the trappers are out here for furs and probably meat, but there are no uh, dragon-sized traps. These are all uh, snares for rabbits, uh, maybe, maybe a bear trap, um, but nothing that is necessarily designed for dragons. And as I get closer, I'm confused by the sound of a, a dragon roaring uh, so maybe maybe they have captured a dragon and so you know, gritting my teeth and trying to figure out how I'm going to deal with another angry mob uh, I rush forward forward until I find this uh, small community that's been built into the shadow of a uh, fairly steep cliff and I see swooping down from that cliff is this dragon and she's using um, the cliff to kind of cling to as she like searches for people and then she'll fly down and like knock them over or swipe at them um and so at the last minute as she's swipe or flying down for another uh, attack run i jump out and <laughs> i once again have my loot and i strum uh, like a power cord <laughs> and i'm like good lady fancy to meet you here and just the shock of this dragonborn being there um i don't know if they're dragonborn in in the the world but uh Krenaz is a dragonborn so for this this story anyway uh she does a double take and um she lands nearby eyeing the people around 
and I ask her well, why she's attacking them, and she says that they've uh, been putting traps down in the forest around. Um, and I say, well, you know, they they do need to eat, and um, it's you you eat you know the animals of the forest as well. And she says, but they're hunting dragons. And I say, but are there signs of this? And I say, why don't we ask them? And so, you know, after a, a short interaction of uh, me essentially saying it's always better to be sure of what you're doing before you make a mistake and cause irreparable harm, um, I managed to get uh, the blacksmith who kind of acts as a, a town leader. There isn't a mayor or anything like that. This town is too small and they all just kind of rely on one another. Um, this mayor, uh, Mayor Goodstead. Names are the worst. Mayor Goodstead. Um, what did I say earlier? That he isn't the mayor. Uh, Wilbur Goodstead. The blacksmith. Um, he comes out and he's holding, you know, his blacksmithing hammer in one hand. Uh, like more defensively than uh, offensively. He's not really sure what his hammer could do against such a creature. Um, but on the side of me, uh, he comes over and, and we talk. He explains that they have uh, no, no loyalty to the Mechark Empire. And uh, he actually um, misses the days when dragons soared the skies and were plentiful and were helping the uh, the essentially rebirth of this world the the healing of the world and he fears what's going to happen now that the empire has killed off so many of the dragons and are searching for the last of the dragon eggs uh, hearing this the dragon the spring dragon is uh, moved to tears and as she uh, bows her head in apology to the people, um, they come out and realize that I'm a dowser, and they offer up uh, just some, some food, just something to, to help me during my journey. Uh, they, they don't really have much, and I don't ask for anything. I, I accept their food offerings graciously, as uh, I'm sure it will be delicious, and I absolutely could use the resources. So speaking of resources, I'm going to get four, four back. That's going to put me at 12. All right. So we are at plus four when we head off into entry 11. And we'll look down at our map here. So that was a good call. Uh, where should I go now? Three choices. I feel like if I went this way, I really wouldn't be coming back up this way. I could now. If I go this way, I'm also not going to go back up that way. So I'm going to lose cards avoiding things. Um, I'm going to go to this corner. And we're going to get the eight of diamonds. All right, so day 11, the eight of diamonds. All right. Positive chaos. A uh, description says, a tiny autumn hatchling seems insistent that I follow it. Excellent. Um, the card says, you must have spent time with dowsers to be so confident around us. And the prompt says, describe the journey. What do you gain when you reach your destination? Awesome. Uh, let's roll a d6 here to see what kind of resources we get. All right, so we got a three. Not terrible, not terrible at all. Although that actually uses up all of my coins. So now I'm going to grab these neat little poker chips that I got from a convention that I was a part of. They're inspiration chips for D&D. I've got a goblin with a, it was a Thanksgiving uh, <laughs> event. And so the goblin, it's really hard to see, but he's got a 
turkey behind him and he's got a knife and a fork he's getting ready for dinner okay so describe the journey um i noticed this this small hatchling um and as it bounces up and down and chirps at me i am uh hesitant at first uh thinking that it's it's a newborn um and you know i just i just, i don't want to follow it i just want to you know like uh pick it up and take it with me and make sure it's protected but it doesn't seem to want me to pick it up it keeps darting away as i do and so uh after a bit i realize that this this hatchling must have uh, experienced people before people that didn't um harm it or or its siblings and so it clicks in my head that maybe it has been around dowsers before and maybe it's been around um dowsers recently so maybe it's trying to show me where a dowser is maybe one that needs uh, help and so you know as quickly as i can i take off after this this hatchling who is like finally and it begins bounding through and it doesn't seem like it's stressed it seems more like it's just trying to show me something and so uh, a bit of the worry fades away as i'm rushing after it um and yet it does seem as though it, it is in a hurry and so as we break through a line of trees there's a small clearing and just before i could smell something that's that's like a uh, cooking it smells maybe it's a stew uh it smells like boiling herbs and maybe some kind of meat stock or something and i as i break through the trees um the the hatchling bounces up to uh two other dowsers who are sitting around a uh, a travel cauldron um one that's you know easily care uh, carried isn't too heavy and it's bubbling um they've been making uh, some rabbit stew and apparently this this hatchling decided that it was uh time to share this stew with another dowser and so when it saw me it came and got me and so now uh, i sit down and i introduce myself i am Krenez, and they are um again names let's go with uh gilbert and hannah Hello, Dowsers. And they share their meal with me, um, giving me the the resources. I end up saving resources for the the day, um, like my own, and they uh, we exchange stories over the firelight as the sun sets. Um, the hatchling beds down next to hannah curls up uh beneath her cloak and it's a restful night for all of us and in the morning when i wake they are already on they are on top of their game uh whereas i have just been blundering around this forest apparently for way too long <laughs> all right so on day 12 uh heading down one direction to go there we have the six of spades all right six of spades on the journal oh i forgot to put the effect on day 11 hang on one sec i got three resources from that so things are looking good as far as my resources go Definitely can't complain about that. And on day 12, we've got the Six of Spades. And I spoke too soon, because now we have another negative card. The card says, only a machine laborer could clear this. And the description says, the, pl the path I was going to take is blocked by a landslide. Um... The prompt is, what has caused the rock fall? How do I find my way around? So, uh, I was near that cliff earlier where the the spring dragon was clinging to and swooping down on the village. Um, I had kind of gone out 
originally I was going to go to this pass that uh, was that goes through that that cliff side, and when I found the autumn uh, hatchling, I ended up kind of going a roundabout way, and so today now that I've reached it. Uh, I start heading up it, and I, I right away start seeing signs of a, of a rock slide. There's bits of, uh, of shale and everything uh, just covering the ground, and sure enough, I get up um, to where I can see it. There's been, um, it looks like there's been some kind of uh, potentially battle on top of the cliff. I can see uh, bits of mech arc machinery uh, that are kind of hanging over the side, like it was a, a war machine that maybe was uh, damaged in the fight and the explosion that it caused when it collapsed caused uh, this rock fall to close the area and now I need to find a way around. Um, fortunately, I do know of another way. It's just going to take an extra day of travel to get there and so I head back down the canyon um, and turn left when I get to the the exit and head back into the forest uh, let's see and I am going to lose let me just double check only one it's not a terrible 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 effect all right as we look at our map, I've got two options here. Um, or I can head to the other sanctuary. Let me double check because sanctuaries have their own rules, I believe. Or I can use it for getting out uh, once I find the... Um, the egg, then I can head towards that sanctuary. Do do do. I believe, if, if I'm correct, I believe uh, sanctuaries are essentially where you drop off the eggs. Um, I don't know if there's any reason to go to one beforehand. And so with that being said, uh, these are our options. I'm just going to go diagonal again to this one over here. And as we flip that card, we're going to find Seven of Hearts. This drag is being elusive. All right. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Seven. Negative chaos. Ouch. Okay, so the place I was staying is raided by Mechark soldiers while I sleep. So um, as I was heading through the forest to... Um, find this other way this this other pass that was going to take me a bit longer to get to um i i stayed in a, a kind of a not a like safe house but like a, a little area that us dousers know about um however apparently the word has gotten out and as i am snoring away uh mech arc soldiers break in um they take a bunch of my stuff but let's see how much is a how much is a bunch so we're gonna roll. Oh, one, nice. Uh, I had a, a forethought that this might happen. And so I actually hid a bunch of the stuff, uh, a bunch of my resources in a, essentially there's like a pit outside that has a, a, um, a slide over uh, false door. And you can't really tell what it is unless you just happen to step on it. Um, and so they only took what was on my person and I only lose one resource. All right, so with that being said, since we're here, uh, I'm going to keep us here and we're gonna go sideways. We're gonna go um, here. 
for the nine of spades. I'm starting to wonder if I maybe didn't put the ace in this deck, but I had to have, right? I had to have. If not, bad on me. So day 14, we're now two weeks into this journey. Entry 14. And by the way, the music that you're listening to is the soundtrack for Dragon Dowser. Uh, so you can get that to, to listen to. I'm, I think it's part of the Kickstarter. I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, I've really enjoyed it so far. Um, even on repeat, it was it was an enjoyable song to listen to while whilst playing. All right, so the Nine of Spades. And we got a positive card. Excellent. Uh, I discovered... I'm interpreting the game perfectly. Awesome. When I rolled a one of Chaos Roll and narratively explained that I'd hidden resources. Brilliant journaling. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right. So the Knight of Spades is I discover a patch of mushrooms growing, which will make a welcome addition to my usual cap camp rations. Yeah, I wasn't really looking forward to what I have um, available right now. It's just kind of like some dry jerky. And I have some spices, but... Uh, using the mushrooms in some water and kind of making a stew with it. Uh, it was a fantastic dinner as I settle down at the end of this uh, day 14. And this gives me a plus one to my resources. That adds back the one I just lost. So then I'll just put that back. Excellent. Okay, now, looking at our map, only have two that I can reach, and might as well just start with this one. The Five of Hearts. So day 15, Five of Hearts. We will check out what that means. Got another negative one. The hatchling that I'm trying to conceal decides to cause mayhem overnight. Um, as we're, as I wake up the next day, I actually find that autumn hatchling that had led me to the other dowsers. However, their dowsers uh, are nowhere to be found, and the the hatchling actually found me as opposed to me finding it as it like came scampering up behind me perhaps it's been looking for me this whole time um i did maybe feed it a few too many pieces of uh, the the bits of stew so like some of the rabbit meat and the potatoes that were in it and the other dowsers were like you're gonna spoil it and i was like it's okay it it's it needs its strength it's a small growing hatchling maybe it decided to follow me because I I did spoil it and I'm okay with that however uh, as I'm trying to uh, bed down for the night um, it is not ready to go to sleep uh, he is uh, belching little bits of fire and some uh, leaves catch and a small smoldering fire begins and so I have to get up and put that out and then I'm watching it to make sure that it doesn't spark and reignite and meanwhile it goes over and like i'm in a kind of a lean to um that i've built from some branches and it decides it wants to play chase and so it pulls out one of the branches and the whole thing collapses and I'm, i just spent hours until this this baby hatchling um has worn itself out and then it like my my blanket is laying there as i'm like putting out yet another fire and i turn around and it is snuggled up it is like wrapped itself in the blanket so there's no blanket left just like a little bit sticking out around it as it has fallen asleep and I go over to whip the blanket out from underneath it and then my heart melts and I say no no that's okay and I actually take those little bits that are sticking out and I cover it make sure its wings are nice and warm and it, like a little bit of smoke comes out of its nose um, as it happily dreams away However, I'm going to lose 
two of my resources. Um, I feel like that is more my my physical, mental, like me resources. I'm, I'm starting to get tired. Uh, so down two resources. Entry 16. All right, not really a bunch of places we can go here. So Kronez is going to head off this way. And that card is going to be the Seven of Diamonds. I'm going to laugh if I accidentally mess this up and there is no ace <laughs> in this at all. Uh, so we have the Seven of Diamonds. Which... Ooh, is a negative chaos card. A rival douser has been to be besmirching my name to local traders, making it hard to secure resources. Um, you know, I've never understood this guy. We're gonna call him. I'm trying to think of someone I can name him after without being obvious. We're just gonna call him Mitch. So Mitch. A rival dowser has been talking smack about me to the uh, the town that I start that I stop into, and I don't catch on right away what's going on. But like as I walk into town, like some of the adults that are walking along kind of look over at me and they're whispering to one another. One of them laughs a little too hard for. Whatever joke they told, I'm, I'm not sure what they said. Um, some kids run by and they're giggling and pointing at me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, and finally, I, I stop to, to you know, get, get some more food, uh, make sure that I'm, I'm all set to go for the rest of my journey. And come to find out that, the, that Mitch had been in town just recently and was um what did he say mm -mm -mm -mm. my brain's not coming up with anything as far as uh the rumor that he started about me but uh why do they have a vendetta against me um the dowsing crystal that I have, the blue one that looks like it has a storm inside of it was actually supposed to be given to Mitch um, but Mitch overslept that morning when they were handing out the dowsing crystals during graduation from dowsing school sure and and therefore uh, I got you know, first pick and that's the one I went with and I might have done it because I knew Mitch wanted it but it also looked really cool so, too bad for Mitch. However, it is a chaos roll, and therefore, we need to roll a d6, and I'm going to lose that many in resources. Another one. I feel like maybe I could have rolled that a little better. It's sticking on the card. So this is a, uh, a silicone die from, um, uh, sorry, uh, my brain turned off, uh, fan roll dice. Uh, they're awesome because they bounce. However, they do stick really bad to certain surfaces and therefore sometimes don't roll. However, I'm totally going to accept that minus one. I appreciate the rumor not being so terrible. It was more like they, they got a laugh um, and were using my discomfort to talk up some prices. Therefore, I'm uh, uh, not quite as well off as I was, but I do have food. All right, so... Day 17. And really only one way to go. We're going to flip this card here. Oh, that's not my card. I don't think that's my card. I have to scroll back up and look. <laughs> that's terrible I didn't write down which card it was uh, so is the autumn dragon let me just double check because the fortunate part is if you don't write it down that's right mine was teeth so 
clubs. The Ace of Clubs is Talons, the Dragons of Fire, Summer, and Machines. Um, or those are those are the the factions that fall under the the clubs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this essentially means that I am going to find broken eggs. Um, that makes my heart hurt. But uh, as I'm traveling up that canyon, I come to a um, like an offshoot trail that goes up and I can see steam rising from above um, like on the mountainside and so you know sometimes you just have to double check where there's steam there might be dragons and so I head up that way and sure enough there is a, a small like um, caldera um, isn't quite active but there is uh, rainwater that has built up in it and heat from the, the lava underneath um, has it heats the water that builds in this area not enough to boil it off but enough to cause steam to come up um, and as I get closer I see that there are stones that uh, could have been in a, like a protective ring at one point uh, too large to have been a fire pit and as I get closer sure enough I see that there are uh, there there's pieces of shell littered across uh, it looks like um, there is a rock that's within the, the 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 ring, and it looks like it was deliberately moved to smash open this egg, and the egg has been uh, drained of its yolk. So it looks like a mechark soldier probably was here. Uh, unfortunately, that dragon egg is not recoverable, but I do gather its pieces and uh, I sit next to the caldera for a little while and I wash off the pieces um, to make sure that they are uh, clean and I try to preserve them as much as possible and I will um, just mutter a, a, a small blessing to the, the hatchling that was never born and to the hatchling's mother and I hope that she is uh, safe somewhere and I'm going to take these shells in hopes of finding the other dowsers that um, were hanging out with the other autumn. Oh, sorry, that was a that was an autumn one. Um, I'm going to take these shells back to the sanctuary, where we will essentially uh, add them to a. Uh, commemoration area uh, for those hatchlings that were lost yeah okay so the downside of that or the upside I think the upside is that even though that's sad I'm pretty sure when you discover another ace other than the one you have selected I get six resources Whew. All right, so there's two coins that I have from there and four of my inspiration tokens. I was actually looking um, on my minifactory.com and looking at dragon tokens that I can print on my 3D printer for exactly this purpose, uh, just to tide me over for now. All right, so that was the Ace of Clubs. We got six resources and a heavy heart as we head into day 18. All right, so looking down, only one way to go. And the next day we'll be able to select something else, but for now we have the three of hearts. Okay, taking a look at the book, we'll head down to hearts and three, it is a negative card. Uh, a stranger I meet at a crossroads says there is a, uh, excuse me, a clutch of dragon eggs to the north. 
I follow the path straight into an ambush. Darn civilians and their meanness. So I, I get to this area and the fellow's dressed in uh, clothes that look like the local fair. Um, and so I, I assume that they know what they're talking about. And, you know, as that, uh, that last village that I stopped in, um, they were no friends of the empire and they were pro dragon. I just assumed that this, this fellow is on, on board with that. And so I thank him and I start heading up this path. Um, I don't notice as, as he follows behind me and sure enough, uh, an arrow strikes the ground in front of me. Uh, it is stone and so it does, it just kind of ships it and bounces off, but I get the picture as I look up and on either side of this small, uh, this small canyon, there are two women in leather armor. They have their faces hidden um, in behind black leather masks and up ahead behind a boulder or from behind a boulder, uh, another fellow steps out, a large muscular fellow uh, also wearing leather armor, but his his arms are exposed to show how strong he is, and he pulls out a massive axe uh, and mentions that I might want to share my resources with them, uh, at which the two on top of the, uh, the cliffs giggle, and the fellow who's been stalking behind me... Um, who has now pulled off like the really now obvious fake beard and and gray hair uh, and he's now pulled up a, a, a hood and has a black mask on so i don't know what he actually looked like uh, <laughs> and he he laughs and as i realize he's there and i uh i also laugh <laughs> and i share my goods with him four four goods so we're gonna lose these tokens I just got but we're still still doing well so minus four to my resources I'm definitely not hurting for resources but I'm getting concerned by the lack of cards that are left that either uh, it's going to be the very last card available or that I didn't put the correct card back into the deck uh, let's start here the Jack of Hearts, and that I think is a. Oh, it's the Winged Lion. Uh, oh, I can't think of what they're called. They're not Foo Dogs. They look like Foo Dogs, though. Okay, and Krenaz will go over there. So here on day nineteen, we find the Jack of Hearts, and we're gonna hope for an awesome outcome jack of hearts positive yes i return oh i return an adolescent spring dragon to its family after rearing it from an egg awesome so this is actually gonna you know probably take a couple of days as uh i'm walking along feeling a little dejected by being uh, hornswoggled into giving up some of my stuff by that group of bandits that I probably should have known better about. Uh, however, as I continue going along, there's like this this scent that only uh, spring dragon eggs give off, especially when they're like warm and like kind of near uh, hatching. And so looking around, I notice that there are signs that a dragon has been nearby recently there's scrapes on the ground from their claws their tail drags um and so i follow these signs that maybe you know your average person wouldn't notice but a dowser would and sure enough i find a uh, a cave that has uh, we're still kind of in this like caldera area where there's like a lot of this volcanic heat coming up and so there's a lot of this moisture that is coming up from um a small pool within and it's just like dripping from the ceilings and such such and as i head into it uh i see this nest that's stuffed back into um this crook in the rocks and for a moment i'm i'm a little hopeful 
that this egg has uh, made it, but I see that it's broken. And it's only recently broken, and so, you know, my, my heart kind of drops a bit until I hear, like, this chirping nearby, and I look around, and sure enough, there's this still covered in its yolk, uh, baby spring dragon. And so my heart leaps, and I move forward, and I take off my cloak, and I scrub it off, and I wrap, wrap up the dragon and uh for the essentially the rest of today i sit down with it and uh keep it safe and keep it warm i give it some food and i begin to worry because uh if the dragon mother was able to return then it probably would have done so and so i'm a little worried about where where its mother might be and so i'm like okay well i guess i will take this hatchling along with me to the sanctuary <clears throat> and so the next morning i set out and uh keeping an eye out for uh, what might have happened to this dragon and as i'm going along i start hearing like crashing noises I'm not really sure what's it sounds like something very large is maybe uh, thrashing against uh, the forest that's just kind of down a little ways and so I head down that direction very cautiously carrying this baby dragon and I, I notice signs of um, something large and scaly and kind of green and minty colored and as the trees uh, begin to as I'm moving through the trees and can see further through them I realize that there is a female spring dragon that appears to be in a snare of some kind uh, it's it has its wings like wrapped up so it can't fly and it seems to be hooked to a very large boulder and I can see that she's trying to like take off and she crashes to the ground and she thrashes against the the snare but it appears to be like um probably some kind of like metal cable instead of just rope and so she hasn't been able to uh, remove it and so as she's doing that uh i don't feel like calling out is going to be the best way to get her attention and so i sit the the baby dragon down and still wrapped in my my cloak and i take out my loot of course and i begin to just softly play uh, a gentle tune and it takes her a few moments to notice it uh, her rage is so great and as she looks over at me um, I can see uh, some some smoke kind of curl out of her lips as maybe she's getting ready to breathe in my direction uh, and then she sees her her hatchling and her eyes blink and she looks at me and she looks at my outfit and she realizes that I'm a dowser and she uh, asks if that's her baby and I say yes I believe that it is um, and I stop playing and I uncover the the hatchling and set it down and rather than like carrying it to her I set it down and uh, kind of nudge it on its way and it, it waits for a moment because uh, you know I was the first creature that it saw I fed it uh, I kept it safe and warm and so there's like a moment where it doesn't really fully understand what's going on um, and then she like breathes out of her nose and this like scent flows over the the hatchling and it sniffs and it turns around and it like chirps and jumps in the air and it like runs over and they nuzzle and <clears throat> excuse me i'm losing my voice pardon me uh and they are reunited uh and i let's see that was the jack of hearts i get three resources for that and again i think certain i feel like these this one here is a uh it's more of a spiritual resource. I feel energized by, you know, make, bringing this hatchling home. Uh, let's see. Okay. That was day 19. And we're 
gonna go back to the map. So I essentially have three directions I can go. Let's flip the corner. Oh, is that it? I think that's it. Let me double check. Oh no, I I did uh, diamonds, and this is scales or, or spades. So close, but now I have to describe another egg that has gone bad or whatever. Um, okay, so for entry 20, uh, I will get six resources for finding the the egg however the egg is is not um valid anymore there's not uh you know i i actually find this egg and it's one of those situations where uh even though the egg was laying it was never fertilized it never um was going to turn into a it was never going to have a, a hatchling grow within it and so as I, you know, pick it up and I kind of shake it and it's, it's so cold and I'm um, very concerned that maybe the hatchling inside is not doing well because it's so cold, uh, I realize that it's, it's awfully light. Um, it does have yolk inside, it does have the, the stuff of eggs, but there's not, there's not enough heft to it. it, it I can tell I've, I've uh, encountered these before and so... You know, I on the one hand I feel sad because it's it, it isn't the egg I was looking for. It isn't the uh, the uh, the autumn egg, but I sit down with it and I sniff it. And it does it, it is fairly fresh, and I give thanks to the the dragon mother who left this behind. There's no signs of of her around. It, it seems as though she placed this here and then abandoned it. Um, and I will, uh, I'm going to make an omelet out of this dragon egg <laughs> that was never going to be a dragon, so I don't feel that weird about it, but I will save its shell and return it back to the, uh, the sanctuary, uh, and that is my, my plus six, uh, resources. Ace of spades. Okay. We are now three weeks into this journey. And as I wipe uh, the remains of this omelet from my, my scaled chin, I look and I'm like, oh, I've got two options left here. So let's, uh, we're going diagonally. We're going here. And so we'll flip this card. Five of diamonds. All right. I appreciate you all hanging out with me today. I wasn't sure how long this was gonna last. And in fact, I was chatting beforehand that if I happened to find the, uh, the egg I was looking for right away, it would be the shortest game. But that, that was not the case whatsoever. Uh, five of diamonds is a negative card. Um, you are with a group of merchants sheltering from a spore storm. When the generator fa fails and I'm plunged into darkness. All right, so uh, that morning I, you know, finish off my omelet and I'm feeling pretty good about things. But as I break out of the forest, as I've kind of traveled part way through the day, and I get up to like the ridge of this mountain um, that I've been, you know, searching for this egg on, I I can see the clouds in the distance and. Um, it's not just a rain cloud. I can tell that it's a spore storm and definitely don't want to get caught out in that. And so, you know, trying to remember where the closest uh, um, shelter is, either, you know, a, a dowser shelter or maybe a town. And I remember that there is a, uh, 
a merchant way station, essentially a place along the path through the mountain that uh, merchants can stop when in need, whether it's because of storms or, uh, you know, they just need to rest or whatever. And there's usually resources there. There's a, a well and there's a, like a building um, and it has like a, a subterranean dugout area that uh, actually has um, power from a generator. And so I head that direction just as this storm is starting to overcome. And I can see that there are, are wagons here. There, There's a barn. Um, and I can hear the, the, like, they're not quite freaked out yet, but I can hear the, the horses inside. They're nickering and they're maybe, you know, braying every so often. I can hear, like, a kick against the door um, to a, uh, one of the stalls that are nearby. Um, and I quickly run over and open the door into the shelter and slam it behind me. And sure enough, uh, the, the lights are kind of uh, doing that thing. Uh, they're kind of uh, slowly ebbing and flowing um, as the, the generator within is trying to keep them on. And the, uh, the spore storm hits and I'm welcomed by these people. And I feel like, you know, hey, this is going to be awesome. You know, there's... Uh, people to hang out with and everything and so they lead me down into the shelter um, and as we get the the inner door closed the one that really kind of keeps out the the spores um, and we settle in for what might be a long night the generator fails and the lights all go out and so we have to spend the night um, just sitting in the dark and I keep hearing uh, noises, the cracking of trees, um, this, the screaming of horses, which is a horrible sound if you don't know what that sounds like. Um, and so, you know, I, my mind can't help but imagine the worst of what's going on outside. Uh, but I do take out my lute and I begin playing calming sounds or uh, sorry, calming songs and singing along with them. Um, and so in doing so, I keep the merchants calm, even if inside I'm feeling a little nervous about what's going on. And so the effect of the five of diamonds is a minus two to resources. Uh, still all right, still got quite a few. The, the plus sixes have helped a bunch. All right. In the morning, uh, I push the door open, and sure enough, there's like some sediment from the spore storm on on the ground, and we just carefully sweep it away. Uh, none of the horses were actually injured, but they have signs of um, freaking out on their uh, their their stalls, and you know, they have like some lacerations on their their legs and stuff. And so I help to uh, clean that up. And then I prepare to leave. And I go on the map to this last remaining card down here that hasn't been flipped. And it is the Jack of Clubs. I have severely begun to worry that this uh, outing was not the uh, it was not intended to be a successful one uh, um Krenis sinks a little sinks a little lower feels a little sad but as i move through the day i find a group of rebel mechark machines and they're uh They seem to be um, huddled around one another, conversing. And as I get closer, very hesitantly, because I'm not really sure what they're doing, I don't see any signs of uh, um, the, the, the mech arc soldiers that should be with them. I don't see any signs of dragons that they might be hunting. Um, and so I kind of work my way into their huddle and I begin nodding and I'm kind of listening in 
and I realized that they're talking about the best way to um, rescue this uh, juvenile summer dragon that the Mechark soldiers have captured and are taking back to their uh, one of their local one of their local sanctuaries um, and I'm like yeah that sounds like a great idea and all the machines turn and look at me and they're you're a dowser and I say oh yeah, I sure am one dowser here at your service anything I can do to help and they say well we want to help this dragon but we're not really sure what to do and I'm like well convenient for you I am a planner a master planner and so I work with them to essentially set up a uh, some kind of distraction uh, for them to cause while I sneak in because for them they're big they're metal it's hard to you know for them to sneak uh, I will sneak in and rescue this dragon as they do so and sure enough they go off um, and we're kind of getting into an area that uh, there's forest on one side and we're on a trail now and you can see the obvious signs of like a cart where the uh, um, the 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 soldiers have placed the dragon into and uh, it's being um, pulled by probably two horses is what it looks like and so the the machines go off into the forest on the one side and they skirt around the group outpacing it and the horses can only go so fast with the the juvenile dragon in the in the wagon behind it and so the machines outpace it and i I'm getting up, uh, skirting the edge of the forest. I'm getting up within range so that when it all goes down, I can I can sneak out and grab the dragon. And so I'm watching as uh, they're getting closer, and or the the uh, the the wagon is getting kind of uncomfortably close to where the sanctuary is. And all of a sudden it like hits this divot in the road. And it looks like maybe that divot was hidden by something, but as the wheel hits it, it crashes into the ground and the, 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 uh, it has wood wheels on it and it just snaps the wood wheel off. And so, uh, the, the soldiers, they're all cursing and, and upset and they unhitch the horse and, uh, two of them uh, the horse says two of them take the horses off and uh, two others go over and like pull the wagon off to the side and they have to like help a third as they pull the the broken the remnants of the broken wheel off and there's like a an extra wheel um, connected to the the tongue of the the card and they have to un undo that and while all these things are happening um, the back of the the or if they've taken the, the dragon out because the dragon, he's a juvenile, he's a little heavier than a hatchling. And so they've taken him out um, and there's like one one guard and she's like standing there with uh, like a leather strap um, connected to like a harness that goes around its head. It's kind of like a gentle leader for a dog um, and it keeps pulling on it and she just, it, you know, it, it doesn't really afford the dragon much in the way of balance or control, and so you can't really get away from her. And so uh, I sneak up behind her, and the dragon, like, stops for a minute and sniffs the air, and it turns around and looks at me, and so she turns around and looks at me, and I have my loot out, and I'm like, hello, and then I clock her with it. And there is, like, a twang, but the the... Uh, the soldiers are all you know cursing still and they can't they don't hear the twang and she collapses to the ground and I very you know gently take off the gentle leader from the the juvenile dragon and I set it next to her after like cutting the uh, the straps um, and um, I just make sure she's comfortable <laughs> and then I take the dragon and we head back into the forest where the uh, mech arc machines actually meet us and uh, they clap and it sounds I'm, I'm a little worried because it sounds like maybe their their metallic clapping is going to be heard by the, the soldiers 
but uh, they're they're now shouting at each other um it seems like one of them dropped the wagon on another one's foot and so they're they're busy with what they're doing um but the mexarch machines are overjoyed that the dragon was rescued and they are actually going to lead it back to the sanctuary that is nearby um so I do need to double check here because okay so so first of all I'll throw on my my uh effects so there is plus 3 to my resources however looking at the map there's nowhere to go um let me double check the rules because I feel like maybe you can go across used cards, but maybe not. Oh, I'm, I'm getting word from the source themselves that backtracking is fine. Does it cost any resources to do so? One for each move. Perfect. I know that's in here. I, I'm pretty sure I read that. I just was trying to find it to verify. All right. So I'm going to use uh, two resources in order to move. So I'm not going to get anything from the first one because it is a... Actually, I'll go back to the game so you can see. Um, the first move took me from the Jack of Clubs here up to the Ten of Diamonds which would cost me a resource, so we'll put that one back over here. And then to move to this one, we're going to flip the card and we'll see how it goes. Jack of spades. So I am going to, there, there's only two cards left and I, I am pretty sure that I can make it through this. and. If none of these, if that last card is not the Ace of Hearts, I'm pretty sure what I saw was the Spade card and thought it was the Hearts. So that will totally be my fault if that's the case, but let's find out what the Jack of Spades does. So here on day 23, <laughs> I swear I put it in too. I just, whether or not uh, this card Here is the ace of spades and it looks kind of like a heart and my brain might have saw hearts so we'll find out here shortly if I was wrong on that so uh, we're on entry 23 and drew the jack of spades And whether or not I messed it up or not, I've had so much fun doing this. I enjoy writing in general and having the prompts for all of this and having the chance to sit down and essentially have this story help me write it is so much fun and fantastic. This is something I should have done a long time ago, this kind of game. Um, all right, Jack of Spades, sorry. <laughs> Clubs, Diamond, Spades, Jack, positive, yay. Uh, I rescue a young winter dragon trapped beneath a fallen machine. Uh, the card says, even made even made a splint for its crumpled wing with machine parts. That's so cute. Uh, the prompt is, describe the dragon and what does it reward you? Um, that's awesome. Uh, so the, the designers on the chat and they're uh, saying that they're making more card games over the next few years. Do you know what the theme of those games is going to be? Or are going to be? And I'm getting three resources from this. I'm just going to pull those out from my pool. Not that I need it. I have so many resources. I could keep going for weeks. Um, 
But let's see. So as I'm uh, moving through here, I catch the the crisp scent of a uh, young winter dragon. Uh, and I'm kind of surprised by this. I wasn't expecting there to be a winter dragon in this area. And so I'm creeping through the forest trying to keep an eye out for it. And I hear it mewling. I hear it kind of making these weird noises, uh, almost as if, as if it's distressed. And so I, I pick up the pace. I, I'm no longer worried. I'm trying to, to find it. And sure enough, I uh, get to this um, this area where it looks like the dragon was trying to get away from uh, a Mexarch machine. And it was going through this like kind of uh, crevice in this large boulder. It's The boulder is like one that you would climb. It's not just a uh, like a large rock it's like huge and it was trying to get up in there um to get away from it but it couldn't go too far it's too the the it narrows down to the point that it couldn't uh but as the machine was trying to grab it, it you could see that it broke off pieces of the stone above it and there was a uh not an avalanche or cave in but like enough of the rock fell down that it destroyed the machine it broke it um and as it's the the machines maybe twitching a little but for the most part it's uh i just walk up and i pull out a uh, a pair of of uh, like tin snips and i just like cut some of the the control wires for it and its power unit stays on but it can no longer be a threat to the dragon and i look up in there and sure enough uh the um the wing of the winter dragon is crumpled in the the creature's hand or the the machine's hand and so i squeeze my way in there and i take those tin snips it's just a little too far for me and i like snip off the fingers and the the dragon pulls its wing free and it flips it and it it's still there it's not broken but it's it's having a hard time it's probably um uh sprained for lack of a better word and so i hold out my hands and I've got like a little bit of uh, jerky in one of them and I wait for the dragon I make like little cooing noises and wait for it to come out and sooner or later it comes out it hasn't seen dowsers before so having been attacked by a, a bipedal creature um, maybe isn't the best way to start off life and it's a little distrusting of me but it finally comes out and uh, I don't grab it I just uh, coax it down um, and it like ends up kind of scampering over the rock and that is burying the machine and it sits down and kind of flutters its wing and it's trying to like uh, you know how like dogs <laughs> will lick injuries it's trying to like lick its wing and so I sit down with it and being as gentle and slow as I can be so as not to startle it I go over to the machine and I kind of pop off a couple of its uh, outer shell pieces its armor and pull out some wiring and some of the rods that kind of uh, are are its skeleton uh, some of the smaller pieces that are make up it like its hands the the pieces that move it's what well, like are uh, what these would be if I could remember human biology um, and I make essentially like a uh, a, a skeletal looking uh, dragon wing and then help attach it to uh just kind of tie it on um so that it has support it's kind of like a brace for its wing uh it still isn't super happy with me um doesn't necessarily trust me i i probably have to spend more time with it to get it to to trust humanoids but I, it does uh it does give me a lick which I appreciate, and that's its reward to me. And then it scampers off. It like licks my hand, and then it scampers off. And I wish it the I wish it the best. Uh, so that was plus three. Already got those. And on the final day here, because I don't think we're gonna check our map. I am not seeing any other cards other than the one. So let's see if I mess this up or not and while we're doing that uh hatchling game says one is it educational for younger children and those with communication difficulty that is awesome how awesome and the other is the journaling version of our big rpg for next year argo zero that's 
fantastic. I'm looking forward to Argo Zero. It looks really cool. I've been watching your um, your your posts about it, and that's really cool about the uh, uh, you know help having a game that helps with communication difficulties, uh, which is kind of your thing, isn't it? Um, they they make uh, uh, Inspirals and Overiles, uh, which use uh, American Sign Language as part of the system. Um, I'm trying to one of these days soon we're going to host a game of that here on the channel really looking forward to that okay uh let's see where was i so i need to spend resources to get there looks like it's going to take me three well so i need to spend two there or two there either way so i'm going to spend those to get there we'll put two tokens back and then I'm going to flip this card and there Wait, is it diamonds? I think it was diamonds. Sorry, hang on. Yep, diamonds teeth. That's the one. Autumn. The very last card was it. That is fantastic. So, um, this egg is the one that was in the cave. So I'm going back to the original story. The, the very beginning that is essentially like a um, uh, it's an epilogue of sorts kind of a, a flash uh, flash scene that shows us what happened to this egg before the dowser sends off to find or uh, starts off to find it so um, as I'm walking around this mountain uh, it takes me a few days and I'm traveling around I start seeing signs of of people there are definitely people in the area there's like uh candy wrappers and stuff on the ground and i'm just like oh and i'm picking them up and i'm putting them in my satchel because it's so annoying and there's like campfire stuff that has not been taken care of and so i'm over there like making sure all the ashes are you know there's no embers that are still burning i pour water on it i put sand on it kicking dirt on it um but it becomes fairly s obvious that there were mecha soldiers in the area and it seems that they're trying to get into this cave that's been closed off by a landslide. And so I'm looking I'm back a ways, but I can see what's going on. And I look up and I'm like kind of looking above and I can see an area that would make sense having been around dragons if they were uh in a if their lair was in an area that had multiple exits they wanted to fly out then this area up where i'm looking is probably a good spot for that to be and so i spend a good part of a day skirting around so that the the mech arc soldiers can't see me and i get up there and sure enough there's it's actually not even large enough to fly out of. If if a dragon was small enough, it might be able to climb out, but it, it definitely isn't big enough for it to uh, to fly out. But I hook my rope up to a very large stone, pull on it to make sure it's it's wedged in there, it's not going anywhere, and I lower myself into this very dark cave, and I light a torch, um, and I'm looking around and. Sure enough, wedged back in the tunnel, or wedged back in, in the cave, sorry about that, uh, set up a kind of haphazardly is this egg. And I look over and I see the, 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 um, the inside of the, the collapsed area, the, the, the landslide, um, and I can see the egg sibling the one who pushed it to safety and uh in the flickering of my torchlight there's there's just like a little bit of her like orange scales that's noticeable and like a little bit of wing uh but it seems that she's she was buried by the landslide as she pushed the egg to safety and so i take a moment and i go over and you know mutter a blessing over her and uh 
then come back and pick up the egg and I, I wrap it in my cloak and kind of baby Bjorn it to myself because uh, now I have to climb out. <laughs> and so uh, nestling it against my chest as safely as I can, uh, I begin scaling up and I realize that's not really working very well. And so I, sl I sling it the other way and I make sure that it's tied in a way that the egg isn't going to bloop out of like a, a hole in the baby Bjorn or something. And so then I start climbing my way out and uh, I'm about equidistant. I'm a little closer to uh, the sanctuary that was on the other side of the mountain. And so um, I spend a couple of days uh, making sure I'm not seen by this, these mech arc soldiers that are, are trying to dig in to get to the egg. Um, and I, I really enjoy my time as I like imagine them finally breaking through, uh, digging out all of that rock, spending so much time and effort and manpower to dig out so they can get this egg to power their machines with, only to find that the egg is gone. And uh, I actually, um, in my mind, I reminisce about the note that I left, that I totally did, uh, that says, oh, you should have got here sooner. And, you know, signed... Uh, Dowser Krenez and it's like setting where the egg was with just like a rock holding it down and I even leave the rope I leave the rope uh, tied to the rock so they see how obviously easy it was to get in here um, but they were just too dumb to do so and so uh, that lightens my step as I continue on um, and I get to this sanctuary on the far side of this mountain and as I go in there, I uh, am met by other dowsers and other people who live here that are super excited that I was able to return this egg. And we take the, the two other eggshells that I found and we, uh, you know, put them as part of the, the commemoration area. Um, not really sure what that looks like in my head yet, but as I write this out later, uh, I'll, uh, I'll have a better idea of what that that is and maybe you know um i take a piece of each egg and i make it into something or i make it a part of something that i carry with me um just so that i have that remembrance with me yeah so that was um the longest version of the game you could play i guess uh I didn't run out of resources, which I was worried about because then you abandon your quest, but uh, definitely had a ton of resources uh, at the end there and made it across. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun. I really enjoy this game. Uh, let me, let's see. Sorry, I need to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so um, I really enjoyed this game a lot and I highly recommend going and checking out. I'm going to share the link again in chat just so you can see thank you so much i appreciate it um i saw that other people uh their first go through they they ran out of resources really quickly and i was like no um so it, it was awesome to make it through this one even if it was the longest way possible it's like i skirted around everything it really does crack me up though because it was not that f I, I bypassed it pretty quickly and went completely around it in a circle um, let's see. So you can head to that link on Kickstarter right there. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, the, the Kickstarter link is in the show notes below. And the other thing is, if you've been watching, there's been the little uh, dowser figure showing up in the, the image rotation. You can go over and add that to your collection on uh, Hero Forge for free. As soon as I remember what the link is, there we go. Just follow that link there that shows up. It will add to your collection for free. Uh, you can, you know, always order their printed figures. Those you have to pay for. That's not the free part. But uh, you can add it to your actual library of characters for free. And uh, you, I, I can't remember if you uh, can do tokens for free and all that. But um, uh, you can, you know buy the the figure to print or have prints made of it or whatever um and uh, i just had a really fun time making the figure on monday so uh yeah uh make sure you go over and check out the kickstarter i feel like i'm forgetting something else oh i wanted to share the fan roll dice uh 
thing just because I was using their super fun, bouncy math rock. There are different colors. They're probably my favorite uh, of, of the dice from them so far. Um, these rainbow bouncy dice, they're called, uh, I think they're silicone. Yeah, they're, it's their, uh, their rainbow silicone dice, but they have other colors as well. Um, I also have a set of uh, like blue grays. They're really fun. Uh, so check those out. And I think that's everything for today. Um, thanks so much for watching. Uh, thank you for chatting also and uh, recommending things. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how well this Kickstarter succeeds, but also what other things Hatchling Games has in the near future and the far flung, far flung future. Um, so keep an eye out here for more of that. And who knows, maybe I'll get other, uh, some of the other streamers on the channel to play another round of this in the near future. We'll find out. Uh, check in on us on Monday as I do another Miniature Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, let's see, that is the 31st of May, we are premiering the first episode of Estera uh, in, in Tresca's Requiem. Uh, in Tresca's Requiem, um, which is uh, created by and is being run by uh, Miko, who's one of the producers here on the channel. I'm super excited to be a part of that. It's his own world, and I get to play one of the last remaining Aarakocra uh, during this age where they're dying off, um, and they no longer exist in the modern world. So it's going to be kind of a um, really awesome and fun game that is probably going to be really heart-wrenching at the same time. So uh, please stop by and say hi next Wednesday. Um, Hello to you and your wife. Thank you so much for watching. That's awesome. And Stacy definitely did fund, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of the stretch goals unlock and maybe more if they come up with some stuff. That would be awesome. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go drink a bunch of water. I have talked to myself hoarse, but I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you so much, and have a good day. Bye.